Asia-Pacific air travel demand is set to surpass pre-COVID levels in 2024. In January 2024, traffic for Asia-Pacific Airlines surged by 45.4% compared to the same period in 2023, marking a rapid recovery after the lifting of pandemic restrictions. During the 2024 Singapore Air Show, Aerotime spoke with Eric I, Vice President of Asia-Pacific Airlines at Honeywell Aerospace. Eric highlighted the significance of maintenance, repair and overhaul for safety amid the surge of air travel. He also addressed the opportunities and hurdles facing airline expansion in the growing travel sector. Eric, we're in the middle of quarter one of 2024 and travel has really surged in Southeast Asia. As the Vice President of Honeywell's Asia Pacific Airlines, what would you say is the role of MRO um, for airlines at this time? At uh, this time? Yeah, so, um, well, number one is um, we actually are seeing much more recovery uh, in, in APAC, right? So we, Honeywell actually forecast that the fly hours uh, will, will pretty much returning or exceeding the 2019, so in 2024, right? So if we look at Honeywell's business or even the, uh, the MRO business, it's very much fly hours driven. Right, so utilization is driven by removals, driven by R and O, uh, you know, driven the scrappage, etc., and that that will definitely drive the demand for MRO, uh, and the capacity will be both on the aircraft heavy maintenance as well as component, right? So, um, we actually have been seeing that uh, the the first the first level of demand is really hitting the heavy heavy maintenance aircraft heavy maintenance airframe level. And we've been talking to many of our industry partners on the key MROs in the region, you know, ST Engineering, SIEC, uh, HACO, and Central. All of them are kind of out of capacity, right? So I think the component level of MRO will become the next. Um, so uh, in this region, in this region, I, I'll speak on behalf of Honeywell first, right? So we actually are well positioned. Uh, in terms of uh, having the Asia Pack footprint, uh, so we have our APU shop that's located here in Singapore, APU and mechanical component, uh, and that's one of our biggest uh, uh, APU MR shop in the world. Um, we also have our um, avionics our repair shop, which is located in Penang, Malaysia. Yeah, so and we're also consolidated in that. Uh, it's not only a uh, MRO shop is also a OEM parts manufacturing shop. So we're leveraging the expertise of that and combine the avionics, uh, both OE production and MRO. Um, and that's outside of China. We also have, within China, we also have very well positioned ourselves. We have a facility in Xiamen uh, that's, that's doing APU repair, component repair. Uh, we also have a shop in Shanghai that's doing avionics as well as uh, wheels and brake. So as you could see that, um, the in terms of the role MRO will play is, number one, is we wanted to get close to our customers, as close as much as possible. So we're well, well positioned within the region. Uh, that's number one. And number two is, um, from Honeywell perspective, while the demand is continue driving and growing, um, we actually had been much more open in terms of our, how we look at MRO. Uh, before COVID, Honeywell wants to do and contain the MRO capacity or capability very much within our shop. We want to do it turning the range by ourselves. We want to do it in our shop. We want to establish a shop and manage the shop. So during and after COVID, uh, we're taking a different or more open approach. Uh, and now we're building an ecosystem. Not only Honeywell own and manage the shop, but also we are we were willing to license out some of our MRO capability to our channel partner, channel partner. And the channel partner will be utilizing Honeywell uh, IP technology. Uh, and also we would, we would uh, deeply look into their process procedure to make sure they're following our quality standard too and provide uh, the high quality services and um, reliability product to the end user. Right, so we utilize the channel partner as a complement and also extension as our arms to, towards a service in the end user and customers. 
That's wonderful to know. It looks like the region is well covered with the Honeywell services. And yeah, can you tell us a little bit more about both the opportunities and challenges of um, expanding in the region amid a growing travel sector? Yeah, so I think I'll start with the challenge first, because that's something that we put a lot of priority on. Uh, so the first thing is really the supply chain constraint, and which is kind of a global thing. Um, and we are seeing that um, uh, Honeywell has such a broad product line. Right? So we have avionics, we have a mechanical component, uh, and also um, uh, we also have uh, uh, engine and power system parts. Uh, and also we're seeing that there are a, a different level of recovery. Um, so we're putting a lot of effort and investment working with our, especially our tier two, tier three suppliers. Uh, Honeywell actually are, we formed two special task team. Uh, it's the uh, customer focus team and readiness team. So the customer focus team is that we actually look at the key suppliers have constraint to supply parts to us. Uh, so um, we have a team actually work directly with those suppliers. Um, and now those are short-term immediate fix. Uh, the, red, the customer readiness team, supplier readiness team, works on the two years, three years from now. What are we going to be able to help the suppliers to really perform? Um, so so that, that's, that's the first portion. I think the second portion really is by extending and our growth in the region is really talent. Attract the right talent and, and, and make sure you know, we're able to build them uh, and also help to con uh, contribute. So the, uh, and uh, we actually had been starting to really expand our staff in some of the uh, high growth region or countries. Uh, like last year, um, uh, we actually extend our staff in both uh, Vietnam as well as Indonesia. Uh, and so that we will be able to catch up with the growth demand in the region. Uh, so those are, I think those are the challenges for him. But in terms of opportunity, yes. Um, I think as we talked earlier, uh, you know, the aircraft heavy maintenance business uh, is moving a lot towards the center to APAC. Right? So we're seeing that uh, our, our major channel partners or, or strategic partners in the region, uh, in both ST Engineering, SIEC, HACO, they're getting a lot of more footprint globally and they're attracting a lot of global uh, white, white, uh, white body aircraft to the region. Uh, there's a huge advantage from both cost perspective as well as technology and an educated engineering perspective. Um, so we, we're going to be seeing the similar things in terms of the component level of MROs um, uh, get into the region too. Uh, so that's where I see uh, not only we're going to be seeing the gross potential driven by flight hours utilization itself, uh, but also it's going to be driven some of the globalization or localization uh, due to the he aircraft heavy maintenance capacity in a globally remapping process. Yeah. Yep. When the year started, um, globally, there's been quite a number of incidents in commercial aviation safety. So what, how important is MRO in ensuring the safety of um, flight operations? Yeah, so um, I, I think th there are really a few aspects to that. Um, so we all know that aviation safety is always comes first. And if we look at Honeywell, Honeywell's product line on the, on the aircraft or Honeywell Aerospace Technology uh, product line always focused on two things. It's safety enhancement and also efficiency, right? So safety enhancement, for example, uh, the product we, we provide like EGPWS, the ground box, uh, and, and, and also our weather radar, et cetera, and TCAS transponder, uh, all those products are really helped to facilitate and in improving uh, the uh, pilots or aircraft's um, situation awareness as well as uh, safety enhancement. Um, so towards that portion is we continued to expand our product features or functionality to ensure that our product will provide more level of safety enhancement. Uh, for example, we are actively looking at products like uh, Surf A, which will provide more uh, uh, aircraft ground level of uh, awareness alerts for potential uh, collision or, or safety incident. Um, we are also continuing enhancing our weather radar capability, like providing 
ability to detect uh like you know um like hail or uh uh traumatic weather condition and so that the pilot will make much better uh much better knowledge decision uh to improve uh potential safety um we're also actively working on a product is called the ROAS which is a runway overrun awareness and alerting system uh which now actually pretty much more become a mandate uh in Europe now um you know those are the product from product perspective we continue to provide upgrades upgrades or technology upgrades towards um uh towards the product to enhance uh safety and so the MRO will becoming the facility to help us to implement to in- implement those type of army we call it retrofit modification and upgrades okay right? uh, so those are those are i think that's the number one portion where the MROs will be helped to uh, be part of that process uh, the second portion is um uh for the MROs uh you know Honeywell especially whether it's Honeywell's own shop or whether it's going to be uh Honeywell's channel partner uh we help our we help we manage ourselves and those help our our uh channel partners to achieve the best quality standard uh they had, uh we actually have a very strong uh, EHS team it's got environmental health and safety team uh you know how do we utilize the expertise not only to our own shop but also help our industry peers to to make sure they are achieving a high standard yeah that's wonderful to know and finally Can you please tell us about Honeywell's ongoing initiatives to help airlines manage the fleet expansion in the region? Um yeah, so uh if you look at the Honeywell's uh initiative especially on growth and uh so number one is that uh we uh, we actually are the number one portion is that uh we want to make sure that we are supplying or supporting airline uh with enough material and also product that avoid any disruption. I think the number one thing for an airline to support them is keep the aircraft flying, avoiding the on the ground. Um so the n- number one portion is as 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 we indicated is that uh you know we need we are working a lot of initiative to improve our output of our shop, right? So um and the airline industry MRO normally we are in the history is 3%, 5% average growth. Uh but for Honeywell uh, last year we we are definitely well achieving over double digit growth in terms of output. I think that's the biggest the support we have towards the airline's growth. Uh that's number one. And number two is that we're continuing enhancing our customer experience. Uh so number one is um we the Honeywell actually enabled automatic service we call it a portal which is a Honeywell website. where the customer can log in and also can can request for parts repair status and so there will be and also the potential delivery date so they have clear visibility when the parts will be coming back uh further to that is we're also enhancing our AOG center which is a 24 times 7 uh now staff uh, AOG call center and customer care center uh this team actually especially after covid they have been really follow up and seamless and working with airlines whenever they ha- they're seeing the AOG potential they read the request to this team and this team will respond with with ASAP and also will track the status and make sure we're not letting any aircraft on the ground 